in a previous video, I talked a little bit about the lifeblood of, an, of a creature. So the word says, you must not eat meat that have it, has its lifeblood still in it. And for your lifeblood, I will surely demand an accounting. I will demand an accounting from every animal and from, every, from each human being too. I will demand an account for the life of another human being. So I want to talk a little bit about what that actually means. What does it mean? Because you could, I mean, everybody knows that if you are dead, if I died right now, my blood would still be in me. So there's not life in my blood. And actually, if you look up the root word of this, it's just blood. The word is Strong's H1818, and it's the word Dom. Genesis 4.10, the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Genesis 4.11 now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. 9-4, but you must not eat meat that has its lifeblood still in it. 9-5, and for your lifeblood, I will surely demand an accounting. I will demand an accounting from every animal and from each human being too. I will demand an accounting for the life of another human being. Okay, so we've kind of read these contexts. It's just blood. Now, why is it being used in terms of lifeblood? What does that mean? The blood of a sacrifice was used to cleanse the altar, and it was also shaken out on the Israelites as well to cleanse them. And Paul said that you can be cleansed from the outside, that these things cleansed you from the outside, but only Christ can cleanse you from the inside. That's the only blood that can truly cleanse us. Are we literally drinking his blood? No, we're not literally drinking his blood. So why would we literally think that blood does anything? There's spiritual significance to this, right? Well, from one perspective, God demonstrated that the blood was cleansing. From another perspective, Jesus told us, do this in remembrance of me when you're drinking the wine or eating the bread. Remember the blood that was poured out for you. And then there's something discussed in, in scripture that is referred to as the blood of the covenant. Well, Jesus talks with us about our covenant and he talks with us about his blood that was poured out for that covenant. Exodus 24, 8, Moses took the blood, sprinkled it on the people and said, this is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with these words, sealed in blood, right? Zechariah 9, 11, and as for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit because of the blood of my covenant with you. What did I say that the blood does? It cleanses you and so it gives you life. You can't have life unless you've been cleansed, unless you have been justified before the Lord. That blood of Christ has cleansed you. Matthew 26, 28, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Mark 14, 24, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty five. in the same way after supper, you took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. What would you be remembering? What, what will you remember when you are drinking from that cup. Well, you should be remembering that this is what gives you life, that that blood that was poured out for you has cleansed you so that you can have life with the capital L, right? Eternal life, not the life that's here, not carnal life, but eternal life. Hebrews 9.20, he said, this is the blood of the covenant, which God has commanded you to keep. Hebrews 10.29, how much more severely do you think someone who deserves Someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing, the blood of the covenant that sanctified them, sanctified. A lot of times we think that means cleansed. Sanctified also means set apart or consecrated. There's a cleansing aspect to it, but it really means consecrated. The blood of the covenant that sanctified them, set them apart, and who has insulted the spirit of grace. So it's the word hagiazzo, and it is to dedicate, consecrate, separate from profane things and dedicate to God. So setting apart and also to purify, cleanse, etc. So it's all of that, but not just cleansing. When you're cleansing, you have to be set apart as holy to one who is holy. Hebrews 12, 24, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Hebrews 13, 20, now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everlasting good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. There seems to be this real emphasis on sacrifice and also understanding what blood means right now within the body in terms of what God is discerning and teaching us. And so I just wanted to 
mention this to you and, and get you to think about what that blood actually means. Why is it important that we're eating meat that in which the blood has been drained. Why is it not enough for us to just, you know, buy some grocery store meat, whatever willy-nilly meat that we buy and set it in, you know, rinse it off in the in the under the water and then cook out the meat, the blood. Because God has clearly said that he wants that blood drained right away and there's a very specific draining process and if you do things incorrectly, that blood there is a certain amount of blood that's going to remain in the in the meat, in the animal. And God does not want that. He does not want meat sitting in blood. Why? Because this is a source of cleansing. Do you think that he wants that detestable, dirty, filthy disrespect of blood, like for meat to just be sitting in blood like that? It's it's dirty. I mean, you know that. It, even when you're thinking about it, like it feels dirty to you, right? It's unclean and it's disrespectful to the blood that's cleansed you. And we need to we need to understand that without, you know, being superficial about it and saying, oh, the life is in the blood. I mean, hello, people have died and still had blood in them and they don't have any physical life in them. What, what are we saying here? We can't understand that outside of the context of sacrifice and cleansing. But see, you see what counterfeit Christianity does, right? They're like, oh, we don't need to know about all that. Jesus paid it all. You know, we don't need to know. Just like we don't need to know about the end times, right? They just stay right in the middle of the Bible, right? Right where they want to be. All the promises of Jesus. We don't need to know about what happened in the past. And we don't need to know about what's happening in the future because God's going to pick us up before that happens. What a wicked, gross, like, <laughs> it's just gross. It's a gross way to look at God's word. Like, uh, only this part is relevant. Only this part matters. Everything else is, you know, the burden of Jesus and Jews. Who can be saved with that attitude? I hope this has helped to understand. Please discern with God.